This is a story about a sensibility that found expression in the wonder and ideals of Einstein and Niels Bohr all through the course of their lives. <laughs> we're not talking about nuclear science, we're talking about these human beings and how important they were as human beings. It was the middle of June and Einstein had just moved to Bern, Switzerland. Over the last several years, I have been presenting that one-person theater piece for audiences of 10-year-olds to rooms full of scientists. And then came a little twist. He made a big point about the grandmothers. I thought, you know, this has real power as a possible ensemble piece. And so I thought to myself, well, who am I going to do it with? Grandmothers came to mind. And now he said, and now, guess what I'm going to do? Grandmothers. One of the advantages of being an old man is I know a lot of older women. I thought, oh, that sounds really fun, but grandmothers? A bunch of grandmothers going to talk about Einstein and Bohr. How good can it be, you know? Well, this should be fun. Let's try it out. Oh, that's so great. That meant we are more of a certain age. It was a stretch. I wanted no part of it. I called him up and said, yeah, I'll do it. My reaction was, yes, I love it. <laughs> Baron, this is a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> These two men were raised on fairy tales. Einstein on peace and justice. You know, at the start, they didn't know what it was going to be like. I had told them a bit thing, but mostly they, they, it was an act of faith. It'll be better automatic when the people are here, there's all that excitement yes. than you yes. and the ring You got the juice of Einstein and Bohr. Bam! This is an older show. <laughs> there you are. You're a beautiful woman, and I want that vitality to, to, to be there. They will look at my must be headed home. <laughs> Imagine that. Everyone rooting for everyone. It was wonderful. So much fun. Just lovely. Beautiful. Wow. I just loved it. Oh, yeah. Yes! Um.